Um, hey Dave, uh. <laughs> um, so yeah, just here live, gonna just chat for about 10 to 15 minutes today, tomorrow, and Thursday about sustainability as your mindset. So if you join now, cool. If you are listening later, leave me a comment, let me know. Um, hey, Monica. Um, so yeah, sustainability, a mindset. Uh, today I'm going to go into kind of what sustainability is and a little bit of kind of the existential crisis that I go through when it comes to sustainability and how actually evolution kind of helps ground me. Uh, tomorrow I'll go through the traditional or currently accepted model for sustainability. It's a three-pronged approach. And then on Thursday, we'll do about a 10-minute meditation. A lot of times in my workshops, I like to have um, attendees and students think about their passion and really connect that to what it means to live sustainably. So we'll just touch on that a little bit on Thursday. Um, but today, sustainability, a mindset. I think first, just to establish that for the purpose of all of this, we're gonna say and accept that um, mindset creates our reality. So I think this is fairly commonly accepted. I think science proves this, spirituality proves this, um, and it's a super interesting conversation all on its own, at least to me. But for today, mindset creates our reality. And I think that the mindset around sustainability today is um, actually kind of prohibiting and preventing a little bit of progress. And by that I mean, first of all, it's confusing. Uh, a lot of people don't really even quite know what sustainability is. It's such a huge topic. But then also we are kind of inundated with a lot of what I think are kind of negative messages regarding sustainability. If it's you're not buying the right products that are going to help the environment or um, it's got to be a lot of work to save our planet from climate change. We only have 20 years before this is going to happen to our lakes and our, and our oceans. And all of that's really useful. I think it can inspire a moment of of action and passion but over time those messages leak into our mindset and we kind of start to believe it we start to think that gosh it is going to be a lot of work and it it is negative and i'm not doing enough i'm i'm not good enough so rather than that i'd like to kind of create a higher vibration with with our thoughts and it's actually on that approach that i've created these workshops I'm doing this series today, this week, um, and with my brother, we created Bogo Brush, our sustainable toothbrush. Um, so yeah, I guess jumping into sustainability, like I mentioned, I think sustainability is kind of this really broad topic, and we can really think about sustaining anything, right? We can sustain our lives, our bodies, <laughs> we can sustain our relationships, we can sustain our planet, the environment, and all of those things are true, and I actually think they all have to do with sustainability as a whole. To me, when I think about sustainability, it's this relationship between humanity and our planet, or our home, our universe. And I think of it as sustainability is the balance of all things. So, you know, not a very narrow definition, but this balance. So it's, I think about it almost like a circle. Anything that is created, any energy, hey, how's it going, cat, nice to see you. Um, anything that is created, right? Energy that's used to create our products, our relationships, our services, all of this is energy that's created. And then there's the energy that it takes to consume it, whether it's humans consuming it or our planet consuming it. And I think if we can create a balance, right, an efficiency between the amount of energy it takes in our creation and equaled by the balance that it takes to consume, there is sustainability. Um, that's kind of like a practical look at it. And it's actually where I start to get into, for me, this little bit of existential crisis. Because really... In theory, no matter how big that wave, maybe rather than a circle, think of it a wave, the energy it takes to create something, right? How much energy that is, it goes up, 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 and then to consume is down. If it takes lots of energy, right, you're having this, this big wave. And I think no matter what that wave, if it's big or small, 
the existential piece for me is that ultimately the planet is really going to take care of it. Um, I think about this in the sense of like mass extinctions. So our planet has gone through five mass extinctions. You know, the dinosaurs, other things like that. That's in the whole entirety of the planet's existence, five mass extinctions. Today, we are in the sixth mass extinction, and it's caused by humans, things that humans are creating. We're creating things that have really huge, long life cycles. And so the kind of, hey, Brie, <laughs> um, where was I? Oh, these life cycles and mass extinction, uh, just light topics that ultimately like we're creating this huge wave. Eventually, the planet is going to do what it needs in order to balance things out, even if, dare I say it, it needs to wipe out humanity. Um, so, OK, should I really, really care? Well, yeah, because the planet's my home. But then I start to back out even further, and I think, OK, but eventually the sun is going to blow up, and then none of it really even matters. Oh, gosh, OK. <laughs> but maybe there's some like residual effect of my energy, sure. But then I go back out into the universe and think, ultimately, the universe is going to take care of it all, too. So why should I care? Why should I even try to do anything at all? And I sit with that for a little while. <laughs> And then I like, reconnect. I reconnect to like, myself, the higher self. And this is ultimately what grounds me back down. This idea that I, we, you, are universe. Right? We are all made up of all of the things that the whole universe is made up. We're human incarnations of the universe. And as such, that means we are part of the evolution of everything. We're here. And one of the things that makes humans unique or that we're able to do is think and make choices to use our mindsets to have impact. And I think about that and I'm like, yeah, we are here. We are universe. Our minds are intended to impact the way the trajectory of our planet the universe goes. So why not try to create smaller waves, create less harm for myself, create less harm for the planet? And uh, I guess that's really where it gets into then how. How do we do that? And tomorrow I'm going to be talking about kind of this three-pronged approach to sustainability. Um, like I mentioned, it's a fairly commonly accepted uh, version. There are others. Um, I've created with my brother like another model. Um, but ultimately, I think it has to do with connecting ourselves outside of our individual sphere, outside of our own perspective. Certainly, we can continue to make decisions that are just for us and just impact our own realm. And that's totally fine. Like I said, I believe the planet and the universe will take care of it. But I like to believe that that higher frequency, the smaller wavelength, right, a tighter circle of impact and consumption is just bound to create something more positive. So I ground myself in a little bit of faith that I'm here and we're all here to make positive impact and to help evolve the planet forward. We get to choose how and when we do that. So anyway, that is today's little, little chat about sustainability and my existential uh, crisis with it. And um, yeah, tomorrow, like I said, we'll dig into a little bit more of kind of school on what those three kind of prongs of sustainability are. Thursday, I'll do a meditation. And uh, for today, like keep your minds thinking about other, other things outside of yourself and how you can make a positive impact. And um, we'll keep the, keep the universe going in a happy direction. Peace.